Thank you very much and hello to everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sabine Steidle. I'm education officer here in the Foundation Stiftung Bundeskanzler Adenauer House in Röndorf near Bonn. I give you another view so you can see where I'm going. In several rooms that uh, present life and politics of Konrad Adenauer. And now I entered the first room of our exhibition and it tells how Konrad Adenauer was born and raised in the city of Cologne in Western Germany and how he became a politician. Konrad Adenauer was born in 1876 in 19th century um, when Germany still was reigned by the Kaiser. There was a monarchy at that time. Adenauer was born in Cologne. We see some pictures of his family, his father, his mother. And this is little Konrad together with his um, sister and brothers. It was a humble background, but he received a good education and um, it was a quite religious family, a Catholic family, and he was very rooted in this region of the Rhineland here in the middle of Germany in, in the West. Um, he studied law in Bonn, Munich and Freiburg. He became a lawyer. He married his first wife, Emma. They met in a tennis club, by the way, you can see this on the left. Konrad Adenauer in the middle, the tennis club in the 19th century. And Konrad Adenauer started his political career in the city council of Cologne. Still, Germany was not a democracy. Konrad Adenauer was responsible for the food supply of the population of Cologne during World War I. And he was quite able to, to support the population to prevent people from starving. And there is uh, one thing that is maybe stunning about Konrad Adenauer. He was not only a politician, but also an inventor. He invented a special bread made of cornmeal um, during this time of need in winter 1916, 1917, when people in Cologne were starving, it helped people to compete with the situation during World War I. But now I would like to show you a very special portrait of Konrad Adenauer. And as you can see here in our museum, the, the photography or the um, objects do not stand alone, but they are put into scene here together with a um, um, desk. It shows Konrad Adenauer as the Lord Mayor of the city of Cologne in 1917, when he was elected as a Lord Mayor. He was about 40 years old. That's not the, the kind of uh, portrait of Konrad Adenauer um, everybody is used to. Most people also in Germany know him as an elderly person because when he was federal chancellor, he was, when he became federal chancellor, he was 72 years old. But here we see the young Konrad Adenauer, a politician in Cologne for the center party, Catholic party um, in the 19th century. How does he look like? Maybe you can give me a uh, feedback about what you can see here and what is your impression about this man, about this picture? Just feel free to, to tell me about your thoughts. He looks young here, yes. Only 40 years old, the, the youngest um, Lord Mayor in the whole German Reich at that time. And very serious, yes, that's true. He was a serious person. He was quite, um, um, he had a great authority as well. He was strict, that's true. And uh, time witnesses also tell us that Adenauer was a strict person. He knew what he wanted. He had um, great plans for the city. 
and he wanted to modernize the city to um, realize great projects for the city of Cologne. Yes, very ambitious. That's it. Thank you very much. Many of his projects during the 1920s as a Lord Mayor of Cologne still shape the city today. Here on the screen, you can have a look at some of these projects, for example, recreation areas around the city and industrial projects. But even in the 1920s, Konrad Adenauer was not only well known as the Lord Mayor of Cologne, but he was also a politician that was well known all over Germany. He had a political function also in the capital city in Berlin. And um, several times he was asked to become Reichskanzler, the Chancellor of the Weimar Republic, the first German democracy. But he refused. And why? The chancellors in the Weimar Republic did not have so much influence. And very soon they were mm, dismissed. So there was a fast um, change of chancellors in the Weimar Republic. And for Adenauer, it was more attract attractive to stay in the Rhineland, to stay in Cologne, to achieve his goals. Here again, we see him in his younger ages. His political party was the center party, Zentrum in German. And this party um, on this uh, election poster um, from the 19, late 1920s uh, was a democratic party. And um, the poster shows these, um, I don't know the right English word, I'm sorry, maybe you can help me, like, um, like weapons against this party from the political left and the political right. Maybe you know this symbol, the swastika. Spear, thank you very much, like spears or lances. Yes, thank you for the help. Um, the swastika is the symbol for national socialism, the far political right of the 1920s. And on the left, we see the symbol for communism. So this political party, the center was a democratic party against the against fascism and against communism. And this was also Konrad Adenauer's uh, opinion. But like many of his uh, contemporaries, he underestimated national socialism, the danger of Adolf Hitler. And this we will see on the next exhibition level. level. Even before 1933, Konrad Adenauer was threatened by the National Socialist Party. And this um, exhibition level shows Adenauer as a persecutee of National Socialism. I would like to show you one exhibit that is very impressive to me as it shows also parallels to our current time. It is um, from a newspaper from 1929. And it was the National Socialist newspaper from this region, from the region of the Rhineland. It shows Konrad Adenauer um, with a cartoon or a um, drawing that is quite anti-Semitic. He was a friend of Jewish life in Cologne and that's also why he was um, um, threatened by the National Socialists. And this uh, writing says he was national, um, he was not uh, reliable and antisocial. So he was really threatened in the newspapers by the political right. And uh, he received also letters from, from citizens who threatened him. On the streets, the fascists, fascists um, shouted out, Andi Mauer Adenauer, 
which uh, means um, he should be he should be shot by by the people. During this time, during um, the 1930s and 1940s, Adenauer had to retreat. He had to resign as Lord Mayor of Cologne. For one year, he hid in a abbey. So the Catholic belief, his religiousness helped him to, to um, compete with this difficult situation. He was arrested twice by National Socialists. Uh, in 1934 and also in 1944 after the um, Stauffenberg attentat on Adolf Hitler. And it was only a matter of luck that Konrad Adenauer survived um, the so-called Third Reich. Years of uncertainty we can read here and on the map you see the several um, stations that Adenauer passed from 1933 up to 1945. He tried to find a solution for himself and for his family. He was not active in the resistance against Hitler because he did not believe in the success of the resistance. And he was also afraid that his big family would suffer. He had seven children. He was married um, twice with um, two wives, he had seven children. And um, he was also an elderly man. He was um, forced to resign as uh, Lord Mayor of Cologne. He had no work, he had no possibility to um, act as a politician anymore. Finally, in 1937, the family found a new home here in the region of the Rhineland uh, in Röndorf. And this is, um, when he moved in his house, he lived there for the last 30 years of his life. And I will show you the house afterwards. In 1945, Germany had lost the Second World War. It was divided by the occupation powers. On the map, we can remember the four occupation zones that were um, built up in Germany. We are now here near the city of Bonn. And it was part of the British occupation zone. But the region where Adenauer lived was liberated by the Americans, actually. And later on, Adenauer used to um, tell to the newspapers, for example, that he was on the American white list number one. Do you know what white list means? Can you imagine what, what is uh, meant by that, that Adenauer is on a white list from the American occupators? Feel free to unmute yourself and talk to me. <laughs> Um, would it mean that he was able to be trusted? Yes, yes, that's the meaning. Um, actually, the American um, army had white lists with names of persons that could be trusted in, exactly. Um, and our curator of the exhibition found such a white list in an archive in America, like opposite of blacklists, exactly. So it's the list of persons that were not national socialists, that were um, maybe able to help to reconstruct the country and to, to cooperate with the occupation powers. That is the meaning of the word white list. Um, I hope you can see something on that white list. Maybe the, the picture is not that clear. But I don't know, I used to tell to the newspapers, I was number one on the white list for Germany. Actually, there is no one white list for Germany, but only a white list for several regions. Here we have the white list for the Rhine province, as you can see. And Konrad Adenauer is number one, but for the city of Cologne, Köln. And why is he number one? Maybe you can see that as well. It's an alphabetical order. And Adenauer, of course, <laughs> with A is in the beginning. Um, he is 
called former mayor of Honev, which is not true. He was former mayor of the city of Cologne. But he was very happy that the American occupators asked him to come back and to help to reconstruct the city. Because when he entered Cologne after World War II for the first time, it was an awful moment for him. He saw the whole destruction of the city. And it was almost impossible to reconstruct the city. He tried everything. He tried to um, bring emigrants back to the city. He wrote a lot of letters to emigrants that had to flee from the National Socialists and ask them to come back to help to build up the city. The administration of the city um, first was made by the American occupation power, but then it went over to the British and Adenauer could not cooperate very well with the British occupators. That's why he was dismissed a second time. And this was, a, was very hard for him. But then he took all his power, all his, um, all his energy and all his political thoughts and helped to construct a new political party in Germany. Here we see Adenauer in the year 1948, a little bit older than on the other picture. Again, very strict, very strong. And he wanted what he, what he wants to achieve politically. This new political party was the CDU, Christian Democratic Union. And for the first time, there was a political party, a Christian party that, um, that was a union between the two um, Christian um, confessions. This was very important. It was a new um, people's party in Germany. The reconstruction, the political reconstruction began on the level of the occupation zones. So Adenauer first um, was active in the region of the Rhineland on, and the North Rhine-Westphalia um, state here in, in, in Western Germany. But then he became president of the Parliamentary Council in 1948. This council was um, responsible for the um, foundation of a new state in West Germany. Germany was divided into two parts, West and East. And it was only possible to reconstruct a new state um, on, one, on one side of the Iron Curtain. So we are already in Cold War in the middle of Cold War. Konrad Adenauer saw the, the danger and the division of Europe into two parts, two ideological parts, very early. And for him, it was very clear that a reunification um, of Germany will not be possible soon. So he had to concentrate on West Germany. As president of the Parliamentary Council, he had a deep impact on democracy in Germany. Also, he was not responsible for the single, um, single uh, for, for the, the content, as one could say, of the um, Grundgesetz, the basic law of Germany. Here we see this um, document. This is our constitution still today. But at that moment in 1948, it was only a provisional constitution. And that's why um, the founding fathers and mothers um, from the Parliamentary Council would not call it a constitution, but only a basic law. And still today in Germany, the constitution is called Grundgesetz, basic law. As president of the Parliamentary Council, Adenauer soon became um, a person um, that was well known, not only in the, in, in the population, by the people in Germany, but also by the press and by the allies, by the occupation powers. He had to cooperate with them. And soon people thought he would be a good um, leader of this new state in Western Germany. I would like to present to you the biggest room of our exhibition. 
that tells a story about Konrad Adenauer as Federal Chancellor of Germany. I hope you get an impression of our exhibition and what you can discover here. Again, there is a, a theme, Adenauer at a desk as Federal Chancellor. Mm. And there are two big photographs I'd like to show you. Adenauer and Ben Gurion, 1960 in New York. And on the other side of the room, Konrad Adenauer and Charles de Gaulle, the French president in 1963. For Adenauer, it was very clear that this new West German state had to um, stand for reconciliation, for reparations after the crimes of World War II. So it was very clear for him that um, this state has to cooperate with the Western allies, especially with the occupation powers, France, Great Britain and the USA. And there was no, it was no choice. Konrad Adenauer as federal chancellor of West Germany had to cooperate with them. But the German-French friendship agreement in 1963 and the reparations agreement with Israel in 1952 were um, two very important um, treaties that stand for this politics of reconciliation and reparations. But now I would like to show you a view to the garden and to the house. Maybe you can see that um, our exhibition building is um, nearby a, a hill. And we have to climb that hill now together. So I take you with me and we go upstairs to see the original house where Adenauer lived for the last 30 years of his life. So far, I told you a little bit about Konrad Adenauer as a federal chancellor and about his very moved biography, his long life, but maybe you have some questions, feel free to ask me anything. Here in Röndorf, of course, we also tell a lot about Konrad Adenauer's private life. And this is what I would like to show you now with our great original object, the living home. Okay, one moment. There was another question. Is Adenauer popular, still popular today? Yes. One could say he is popular. Um, you, you have to um, remember he is like a founding father of the Federal Republic of Germany. And he was the first democratic politician who after World War II, when Germany was really destructed and it was no sovereign state, it was um, divided. Uh, he helped to reconstruct the country and his um, Chancellorship from 1949 up to 1963 is um, well known for reconstruction, mater material reconstruction as well. So the wealth was growing, economy was growing. Um, this period of history for everyday life is called an um, economic miracle. It was perceived like a wonder that Germany um, is reconstructed again. And at the same time, he helped to Germany to be um, recognized as a peaceful country in the world and as a partner for the free world in the Western um, part during um, Cold War, um, to be accepted again. This was not a matter of course. It was very, very difficult to regain um, the um, trust of other countries to Germany again. And that is why Adenauer still is very popular today. But of course, there are some um, aspects of his politics that are highly um, discussed still today. How do former East Germans feel about Adenauer or are they more ambivalent? Okay, thank you for this question. Um, yes, they are more ambivalent, that's true. Um, and it also differs from the political um, parties. So 
um, his politics of uh, rearmament, for example, um, during the 1950s, he was not a pacifist. He wanted um, West Germany to have an own army again. It was very discussed uh, from contemporaries and still today, it's not a matter of course that Germany has an own army. And in the GDR, of course, there was always propaganda against the Adenauer state. You have to take this into account as well. Um, Adenauer was um, presented as um, a person who stands for the war and for fight between East and West. Um, other than uh, later Willy Brandt, who stood for reconciliation between East and West, for the new politics and, and for understanding between East and West. But Adenauer stands for Cold War and for confrontation between the two blocs. He was anti-communist. He had fear of uh, Soviet um, um, expansion. And that is why there was highly propaganda against him in the GDR. And still today, there are people in the GDR who say, Konrad Adenauer has left us alone. We were under the Soviet um, um, power and people in West Germany could achieve a better life, were free to travel, for example. But we in the East, we had no chance and Adenauer did not want a soon um, reunification. So we were left alone by Adenauer. Um, yes, but um, historians say today there was no choice. It was not possible. So it was realistic that a, recon a reunification of Germany throughout the 1950s um, in a free democratic country was not possible. It was not um, a realistic uh, goal. Nevertheless, it's discussed up to the present day. I hope this answers the question more or less. All right, now I'm standing in the middle of, of the estate, um, halfway up to the, to the original house. And we may have a look to this um, path. This was the original um, path that Adenauer took when he wanted to come home. Um, formerly, this was a wine yard, and um, in 1937, he could buy this um, estate. It was not very um, expensive at that time, um, and he could move in here with his family. But there is no street, no access for cars up to the house, so the family and Adenauer always had to walk. They had to walk this way. Um, on the left, on the right side, maybe you can discover, it's, it's quite light of the, of the sunlight now, but maybe you can see there is a small white house. This was um, a house where the policeman, the security was stationed when Adenauer became federal chancellor in 1949, but there was no more security. Adenauer could not drive. He had no driver's license, um, but he had a driver and a special, very special official car as a federal chancellor, which is even named after him. It's the so-called Adenauer Mercedes 300. And he was fetched um, over there down the street um, and all this way he had to walk. 58 steps up to this, to his house. And now we go further. We will enter the, the main garden on top of the hill. <laughs> yes, we are lucky that it's sunny today because in the last days it was raining very often. <laughs> yes, it was healthy. Maybe that's why he became so old. You may have a first look at the beautiful roses. I don't know, I love roses. 
I now entered the house of Konrad Adenauer and I'm standing in the um, first hall. Okay, now you may have a look and look around here in the hall of Konrad Adenauer's original living home. Everything is kept as it was when Adenauer died in 1967. And here in the first room, I would like to show you something very special. A few steps further, there is a um, picture that was given to Adenauer by his daughter. Hey, ich bin alleine. Ich habe keine Führung. Ach so, alles gut, wir haben uns wieder gefunden. Danke. danke. I'm sorry. <laughs> First, for, sorry for the interruption. Um, this special picture shows the whole family tree of Konrad Adenauer. It was given to him to his 19th birthday, 90th birthday by his uh, youngest daughter. And it shows the family in form of a rose tree. Um, Adenauer was a rose lover. And uh, that is why all his children and grandchildren are shown as roses on this picture. On the left, you can see his first wife, Emma. She died quite young at the age of 36. They had three children together, Konrad, Max, and Ria. And on the right of Adenauer, the patriarch, as he is always called here in Germany, there is his second wife, Auguste, called Gussi. They had four children together, Paul, Lotte, Liebet, and Georg, and 24 grandchildren. Nowadays, all of the children have passed away. But the grandchildren still meet every year here in the original house um, for Christmas. They celebrate together. It was a special wish of Konrad Adenauer um, that his family would remain rooted here and um, would meet here in this house. When he passed away in 1967, all of his seven children agreed that they want to donate the original estate, the living house, and all his private archive to the Federal Republic of Germany. Um, there should be created a foundation to commemorate Konrad Adenauer's life and politics. And that's how our foundation was founded um, already a few months after Konrad Adenauer's death. In the second room of the house, you can maybe see that Adenauer was a religious person. There are many artworks related to his Catholic belief. And I would like to show you something very special here. Two telephones. With the red button, Adenauer could be connected directly to his office, his chancellor's office, in the capital city of West Germany, the provisional capital, capital city, which at that time was the city of Bonn. It's about 20 minutes by car from here. The next room is called the music room, but you can see no musical instruments here. Adenauer's Second wife, Gussi, and his daughter used to play the piano and the violin here in this room. But when the daughter moved out, she took the piano with her, but the name Music Room remained. What is your impression about the, the style, the living style of Konrad Adenauer? How does it look like from your point of view? So you have a very different perspective. <laughs> you come from different countries and from another epoch. Ah, you mean it's very modest, so it's not as um, luxurious as you expected? Expected? Your grandma would love it. <laughs> 
Yes, typical 60s. There are some um, items that are typical for the 1960s. The furnishings you can see here, they are from 19th century, actually. They belonged to Adenauer's first wife, Emma. Emma. She belonged to a wealthy family of Cologne. And she also brought the, um, the artworks to the family. Yes, a little bit aristocratic. Uh huh. That's very interesting. Of course, Adenauer was not aristocratic, but his, his living style was quite luxurious. And we have to remember this home, this house here in Rundorf, was only a solution in a time when Adenauer was um, not able to be Lord Mayor of Cologne anymore. He was a persecutee of the National Socialists. So it was a um, solution in, for a time when it was, yes, he was not very well at that time. Um, nevertheless, it was a big home for a big family and there are a lot of items that remembered of his power and his living standard in Cologne during the 1920s. Yes, you liked the candeliers. I don't know if this is the right word. Like in a Jane Austen film, very nice. <laughs> and of course, all over the house, you can discover special exhibits that were present by, for example, other state leaders. What you can see here is the oldest object in our, in our museum. It's about 3000 years old. It's an original vase that Adenauer was given by the Archbishop of Cyprus. Another very impressive object is this cross on an amethyst. And it was given to him as a gift by the Pope, Pope Paul VI. When Adenauer became federal chancellor, it was not clear what should happen with all the presents he receives as a chancellor. Um, so he kept some things that today Angela Merkel would not keep in her private um, estate. But of course, today everything belongs to the Federal Repub Republic of Germany. Now we entered the big living room. I just turn around so you get an impression of the room. This was the place where Adenauer loved to sit in the evenings. He had a great view over the Rhine Valley from this place, over the village of Röndorf. And we are looking to the hills of the Eiffel region. We cannot see the river Rhine at the moment because there is a lot of, there are a lot of trees and there is the church. I don't know, I visit it every Sunday. And here we are looking into the direction of the city of Bonn, where his workplace was. So this was only his private home and not um, a residence for a state leader where he received uh, other state leaders. This was only private. <laughs> yes, I'm glad that you like it. I hope you can come in person one day <laughs> and have a closer look. Adenauer loved nature, he loved his garden, but he also loved culture. For example, he collected religious art and artworks from the Netherlands, like this painting shows a landscape in the Netherlands. And he loved to listen to music. This is what I would like to show you here. This is his um, music box, actually. He liked to read as well. He collected books about philo philosophy, about re religion, about history. Um, and he listened to classical music. I would like to show you this. This is the music box where he could listen to his records and to radio. And as you maybe can guess by the 
style of his home and, and of his art, he did not love modern arts or modern music. Everything was very classic. He loved, for example, Haydn or Mozart or Beethoven and religious motives in arts. Still today, every day, our staff puts fresh roses on the tables, which we can see here <laughs> from the garden. And now we enter a special small room where Adenauer used to take his breakfast. When his children moved out, he sat down here at this small table. And in this room too, we have very famous presents Adenauer got from his travels as federal chancellor. You see two silver vases on the right. He was given as a present by the Japanese emperor in 1960. And there are two paintings I would like to show you. And maybe you can guess by the signature who painted this antique ruins. Do you have any idea? It was a state leader who liked to paint, who liked arts as well. Very good, Churchill, Winston Churchill. Here again, the signature of the painting. Yes. And also the other painting given to Adenauer and was painted by a state leader. The signature is DE. You may guess, does anyone have an idea? Dwight Maybe Eisenhower? Yes, very good. Oh, you're really good. <laughs> it was painted by Dwight D. Eisenhower. That's right. When he was not yet um, American president, he was, um, I don't know the right word in English, he was stationed in Europe for the NATO and he returned to the USA for the election campaign. And before he um, went back, he gave this painting to Konrad Adenauer as a present, as a farewell present. And Adenauer, um, yes, he, he was not quite thankful, one could say. He, he missed to, to say really thank you for this present. And when he was chancellor and uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower was um, American president, um, uh, yes, the, the, the American foreign minister, John Foster Dulles, came here to, to Bonn to visit Adenauer and they talked and Dulles uh, was told before by Eisenhower, he should have a look at this painting. Adenauer had almost forgotten this painting. And when uh, John Foster Dulles asked for the painting, Adenauer had to write a short notice to his, uh, to his staff and ask to find this painting and immediately to, to present it in, in his uh, office in Bonn. And uh, it is told that this worked out and Adenauer could present the nice painting to John Foster Dallas and that he said, every day when I sit here, I have a look at this beautiful painting of your president. So this was diplomacy in the 1950s between Adenauer and this very important um, transatlantic partner for West Germany. Every room of the house has an own access to the garden. So we may again look out from here. And I again turn around and go back to the dining room of the house. Yes, Adenauer loved grandfather clocks. That is why we can see three grandfather clocks all over the house. They sometimes make noises as well. And here again, we see his uh, religiousness 
this Madonna was a present by the federal um, government to his 75th birthday. These furnishings um, Adenauer took from Cologne, from his big house in Cologne and brought them here to Röndorf. And at this table, he sat together with Charles de Gaulle and his wife and they um, met here in his private house in Röndorf because Adenauer said, Charles de Gaulle is my personal friend. So this was very special. No other state leader was invited personally to Röndorf. Here we can discover something very special. Could you guess what it is, what it is used for? Exactly, the bell for the servants, to call the servants, that's right. To call the staff, yes. <laughs> Adenauer had a cook. Even in the difficult time, oh, it's closed, I'm sorry, I have to open this door. Even in the 1930s, when he was under surveillance of the National Socialists, there was a cook here together with the family who was responsible for all the meals and the work in the house and garden. And we may enter the kitchen today Ah, I see. In Korea, you have these bells at the tables and restaurants. That's interesting. It's not, it's not um, common here in Germany. The kitchen normally our visitors cannot see. So this is special for you today. The original kitchen of Konrad Adenauer. Some items that are again typical for um, kitchens in the 1950s and 60s in Germany. The cook had her place here in this room and which is stunning to me is that even here there is a portrait of Konrad Adenauer. I'm not sure whether the cook placed it here or it was maybe after Adenauer's death. And in this room, what we can discover is a television screen. I don't know, I did not watch television himself. He was very critical and skeptic about television as a mass media, um, but he allowed his cook to watch television. I hope you got a first insight to Adenauer's original house. Now I leave the house again and I hope that the connection will remain because I would like to show the garden to you. vegetables and fruits to survive during World War II. There was also a sheep in the garden. Yes, we are with the weather. And I'd like to show you this pavilion that Adana was which Adana constructed in 1963. Wow. I hope our gardener will stop for a moment so you can hear me. Can you see the desk of Konrad Adenauer? It's a bit not so easy from here. Maybe it's better from here. This is where Adenauer sat down to write his memoir after he resigned as a federal chancellor.
Ah. Herr Jakob? Herr Jakob? Können Sie fünf Minuten? Zwei Minuten. Zwei Minuten. Ich bin gleich weg, Herr Jakobs. Gut, danke. So, I have to look into the chat. What were your questions? Ah, you ask if it's hot now. Ah, I, I see. Okay. Okay, um, it's not very hot at the moment. It's about um, 22 degrees, so it's very, very um, uh, comfortable. Um, maybe in the in the hot summer days, I don't know, I did not sit here. Um, he was a very old person at that time. When he resigned, he was 87 years old, and he planned to write his memoirs here in his garden in Rundorf. Um, so in the hot days, probably he did not sit down there. Um, he was not very um, happy to write his memoirs because he was very concerned about his political air and um, sometimes even a bit depressive about what will be in the future, will be everything fine. So it was difficult for him to write his memoirs in the pavilion. And sometimes the secretary had to um, to uh, turn his desk around that he's not so distracted by the nice view over the Rhine rally, so he could work better. <laughs> um, so it's very, very comfortable today, and we are standing in front of the Boccia court of Konrad Adenauer. Do you know the game Boccia? Have you heard about it before? <laughs> So you're distracted as well when you study, I see. <laughs> so you have to do sports to concentrate again. And Adenauer's favorite sport was boccia. Maybe you know uh, the name pétanque or boule from France. And Adenauer loved the Italian um, the variation of that sport. Ah, you have the same game in your country. Where do you come from, may I ask? Yeah, I see. So it's also a um, Mediterranean country. Yes, probably. And uh, Adenauer traveled to Italy from 1947 on. It was his uh, favorite uh, vacation destination. And there he got to know the game Boccia. And he thought this was very good for an elderly, elderly person like me to stay fit. And um, he brought this game to Germany, to West Germany. He uh, constructed a boccia court here in his own garden, in his private garden, but also in the park of um, his chancellor's office, the Palais Schaumburg in Bonn, there was a boccia court. And when uh, visitors came, like the Italian um, president, they uh, played a game boccia together. It even has floodlights, maybe you can see that. So I don't know, when he came home from office in the evenings, he played around Boccia. There are big wooden uh, balls and a very small ball called Palino. And you have to try to catch the small ball with the bigger ones. That's the, the aim of this uh, sport. <laughs> we play sometimes with our visitors as well, and it's not wet. And many other things you can see in the garden come from Italy, like this uh, very nice fountain. I don't know, I brought here from Cadenapia at the Lake Como in Italy, where he liked to pass his holidays. Yes, and again, a nice view over the roses. 
to the house. Now I try to turn around the house to the other side of the house so we get an impression of the whole estate maybe. Yes, it's, a, it's very beautiful and it's a lot of work. You heard and saw our gardener maybe. He has a lot to do here to keep everything nice. There's a very beautiful rose over here. I like the color. Excuse me. Yes. I have a question about the um, uh, archive. Uh, yes. Is the house you are uh, showing us uh, the same uh, Bundeskanzler house, or uh, mm -hmm. is that the is that the same uh, Konrad mm -hmm. Adenauer house? Yes, it's Both the same. Art is the same. Yes. Okay. Thank you for and, this question. Yeah. Yes, I'm. And I'm if, sorry. Okay. Oh. And if we uh, we would use the archive, uh, we must come to this uh, place, yeah? That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two foundations in Germany and sometimes uh, we they are confused. There is the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, which is a political mm -hmm. foundation um, supported by the Christian Democratic Union, by this party. Uh, this has nothing to do with us. Our foundation is a spatial institution from the Federal Republic, and it's called Stiftung Bundeskanzler Adenauer Haus, complicated name. And we do not have only the museum. Thank you for, the, for your question, because I forgot to say, um, the foundation commemorates Konrad Adenauer also with the archives. Um, all the, the private estate of Adenauer belongs to the foundation. And there are also a lot of important papers that are related to his politics that can be um, seen here in Rundorf in our archives. There are some photographs, many papers, books, and so on. And it's possible to work here in the archive. It's also possible to ask for documents via email. So our Staff from the archives is always happy to help if you need anything for your for your works, for example, or even for private interests. So um, the you. archive and the um, science uh, science resort of the foundation um, is responsible for or, or takes takes part of of the scientific research about Konrad Adenauer. We have also a lot of publications about Konrad Adenauer and about the era of Adenauer in German history. Thank you. You, uh, you mean that uh, it is possible uh, for us to stay uh, there for more days or not? Um, we do not have uh, um, any possibility for you to, to stay here overnight. No, but it's I possible. mean staying to work. Uh, yes, not, uh, of course, <laughs> of course. <Okay. laughs> yes, yes. So you just write an email. Um, uh, and and ask uh, when you would like to come and there this is possible that's no problem of course okay thank yes. you <laughs> okay so unfortunately again it's very loud here there are some construction sites nearby i hope you can hear me nevertheless because now we Look at the other side of the house. This is the door to Konrad Adenauer's bedroom where he passed away. Oh, you can't see anything, I'm sorry. Too shiny. And this is the window of his study, both on the second floor of the home. And on every level, on every 
part of the house, there is an own garden. This is the garden of the dining where we were before. We can take one look back to the house from the basement, the terrace where the family could meet, place for all the um, instruments for gardening. And according to the foundation, um, the foundation law, can you see that? On the right and on the left, who do we see here? Maybe it's too difficult. This is Konrad Adenauer. And next to him, we see Charles de Gaulle, the French president. It's a statue of a Hungarian um, artist, Imre Varga, and he um, constructed this double portrait of the two state leaders. And um, because of the high impact they had on, on history of their states and on the German-French um, friendship agreement in 1963, this statue can be seen here in the garden of Konrad Adenauer. So I hope I gave you an impression of the whole estate and you can imagine how it looks like here and what you can see and discover. I'm sorry for the inconveniences <laughs> with internet and with uh, noise all around. Do you have any further questions to me?